K-J-E-L-L. Is it couch? <laughs> Here we go, my name is Chell. It's Chell, it's Norwegian. Spelled K-J-E-L-L, -L, pronounced Chell. Yeah, I know, that's not even a joke, that's my life, and people are like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I'm used to that, I get it. It's a weird name, it doesn't make any sense. Norwegian, but no one ever gets it right. I understand it's difficult, but the names that people come up with blow my mind. I used to wait tables at the Bubba Gump Shrimp Company at the Mall of America, because uh, I'm a winner. <laughs> and this guy looked up, I'll never forget this, he goes, I had a name tag, my name was spelled out clearly in puffy paint. He goes, K-J-E-L-L. -L. Is it couch? That's <laughs> what so he said out loud, couch. I'm like, yeah, that's my first name is couch. <laughs> my parents named me couch. Yeah. Now, did you know that the J-E-L-L -L part of the name is totally silent? Yeah, he nailed it. And it's pronounced ouch, too. He just whipped that in there out of nowhere. <laughs> Every year on the first day of school, it was always the same annoying ordeal. You guys remember that? When teachers go through Oakland, they go through all the normal names. Like, what's your name, fella? Sam. Sam, right on. Sam, S-A-M? Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Well-adjusted, healthy individual, huh? That's great. Parents loved you. <laughs> What's your name, fella? Jordan. 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 It's pretty. <laughs> J O R D A N. Yeah, good for you, Jordan Jash. <laughs> These are normal names, right? So teacher goes through roll call and they go through all the normal names like Sam and Jordan. Every time they got to my name, I was, I was knew they got to my name because it was the same stupid reaction. It was just like, <sighs> wow, <laughs> oh, this is a stumper. Um, uh, is, it, uh, is it kill? Is there a kill out there? That's what a teacher said, kill. And I'm like, yeah, right here, kill. Last name is you. <laughs> what is a love affair? Every time I meet you guys, everyone does the same thing. I go, hi, my name is Chell. You guys always go, oh, shell, like a seashell. And I go, no, it's Chell, it's like a CH. I go, oh, shell. I'm like, no, that's S-H, just shut up, learn my name. It's so, my whole life is explaining my name. You know, it's just like, it's it. I have an identical twin brother. Oh yeah, there's more guys, so let's buckle up. I heard that, oh, oh, over here, you're like, oh. Yeah. I have a twin brother. Are any twins in the audience? Applaud if you're a twin here. Get out of town, Sam. You're a twin? This is nuts. That's bonkers. Are you serious, you're a twin? Right on, you're identical, fraternal, what do you got? Fraternal. Fraternal? Yeah. So our, what's his, is it? A... Uh, Max. Okay, Max, because I've asked this question before. <laughs> well, I'm asked, people ask you stupid questions, and I was about to ask what is his name, but it's fraternal, so it could have been a girl, and that would have been a weird question to ask, right? But it's Max, yep. right on. So, I have a twin brother, his name is Trick V. <laughs> yeah. T R Y G V E, Trick V. <laughs> My name is Chell. My parents' name is John and Jean. <laughs> it's true. That's true. Unbelievable. Sam, what are your parents' names? Andy and Suzette. Andy and Suzette, right on. I like them. Good people, huh? <laughs> <laughs> What do you do, Sam? You a student? Yeah. Right on. What does your brother do? Student? Yep. Good for you. Where did you guys go to the same school? Yep. Okay. You're making this difficult. Uh, who's the older twin? He is. He is. How many minutes? Two 
two minutes. Just a nibble. Just a nibble. The reason I ask that is my brother is older by five minutes. And apparently those five minutes gave him the ability to succeed in life. Because <laughs> that is, that's the case for most twins. Usually the older twin excels everything by just a smidge. And this is true, Sam's like, this is true. You struggle with this. Your brother gets better grades and stuff. You go to the same school, so that's good, right? Yeah, you hang on, hang in there, all right, buddy? <laughs> believe in you, we believe in you. <clears throat> My brother's better at everything. Better grades in school, better at sports. This goes back to birth. Uh, this is true, all this is true. <laughs> uh, my parents didn't know that I was coming. Yeah, they weren't expecting me. I thought they were just having my brother. That's awesome. I crashed my own birth. Thank you guys. Thank you. <laughs> I crashed my own birth, right? So that's no good. So my brother comes out and I go, oh, look at our little baby, we love him. He's got success in his eyes, this is our fella. And put him in a nice, warm, cozy blanket. And this is what the doctor said, word for word, because the story is so true. I mean, it's so funny. <laughs> Everything is true. It's so funny. He was told at every Thanksgiving dinner. The doctor said, he said, wait, there's something more. There's something more, like I'm some beast or creature of unknown species or origin. That's a licensed physician <laughs> saying there's something more. Like what? Why don't you say, hold on here, we got some afterbirth and it's taking human form. <laughs> oh God. Come on. Come on, come on. <laughs> like I said, my brother's wrapped up in a nice warm, cozy blanket. They put me in a bedpan. That was my... <laughs> My welcome mat to the world was a bad fan. I'm like, I'm freezing. I'm freezing. Can I get some gauze or something? Anything. <sighs> People ask creepy questions. Let's put guys, guys ask creepy questions. You guys ever ask if you do the old switcheroo with your girlfriend? Brother's girlfriend? You never got that? I get that quite. I got it all the time. What's that? I got it all the time. Oh, you did? Why'd you say no? Because <laughs> you never did. You never did? Well, of course you didn't, because you're not a sociopath. Good for you, Sammy. We believe in you, Sammy. That's right. No judgment. There's no judgment here, you guys. No judgment. <laughs> I know. It's a creepy thing. Like, can you imagine that scenario? I'm like, like my brother's girlfriend doesn't know that I'm, <laughs> she thinks I'm him, and I'm like, make out with her. I'm like, ah. It's not, it's not, I fooled you. It's the old switcheroo. <laughs> Psychotic. <coughs> oh. I remember one of the worst days of my life. My brother and I played football in high school. Right? And at the end of the season, well, that's right, guys. I played football. Check it out. Yeah, you like that? <laughs> that was 5'7, 150. Pretty much unstoppable, you know what I mean? And at the end of the season, they give out the awards to all the players. He got all the awards. He was captain of the football team. I wasn't. He was MVP. Broke the rushing record as a running back. Got all conference. You know what I got? I got a cute little certificate. <laughs> a piece of paper. It said honorable mention. <laughs> you guys are familiar with that. That's illegal. You know what that means? Basically it means nice try, Rudy. That's what that should say on it. Good hustle. Good hustle, loser. Find your friend Lucas and play with bugs, okay? Because you're a nerd. <laughs> Can I see the movie Lucas? It's from the 80s. This is a long time ago. So let's focus. We're walking out. My brother's got all these trophies and awards. I've got this stupid piece of bark with calligraphy on it, just feeling worthless. <laughs> the tension's thick. My stepmom was trying to make me feel better. She's like, wow, chill, that's great. We should have that framed. I'm like, yeah, that's a great idea, Wendy. We'll frame that. 
I'll put my wall here of all my failures and shortcomings in life. It'll be great. Yeah. Put it right next to that one. What does that one say? DUI. Yeah, that was a good one. Shelly Blue 2.6. It's not good to do that, you guys. That's not good. It's bad. What about this? 890. What's that? That's your combined SAT score. That's bad. It's a really bad score. Do you guys even take SATs anymore? It's ACTs, isn't it? ACTs. ACTs? What's a good score for the ACTs? 36. Okay, I got 23. That's not good either. I, here's what I always say. Oh, if you talk to someone that takes a test like that, I'm like, <laughs> I would always say, oh, I don't, I don't score well on a standardized test. That's just not my thing. I don't score well on a standardized test. It's, like, it's such a cop out. I was like, really? Well, is it the number two pencil that bubbles that disrupt your linear thought patterns? <laughs> You're a dummy. <laughs> my brother, uh, he's, got a, he's got a kid. He's got one child. You guys have kids here? Yeah. <laughs> Good for you guys, huh? Good for you guys. How old are your kids? Ten and five. Ten and five? Right on. Good stuff. Uh, I don't have kids, and I, I was asked, they asked me to babysit him for the first time when he was two and a half years old, and that's a daunting task to be responsible for this little critter. <laughs> three, three and a half years old, that's a fun age when they're three and a half, you know? They're pure, they're innocent, they're open to the world. I love lying to them just to see what the reaction's going to be. <laughs> I was standing next to him, I was talking to him. I got, I got a gut. I used to be in good shape. But in the last, like, oh golly, uh, two years I've gained 30 pounds. 30. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> my Irish accent, 30. 30. You ever talk to someone from Ireland or Scotland? That accent puts you in a good mood by default. It's a weird thing <laughs> where you're just like, hmm, things are great. I think I'm happier. It's a good day. It's a bright day. I had to pick up my friend's friend. I, I never met her, and she just flown in from Scotland. And I picked her up at the airport, and I'm very socially awkward and just kind of keep to myself. And the moment I met her, I was just, in, I just loved her. And the first thing she said was, do you think we could go to a hardware store to get the converter plug for my hair dryer? <laughs> my hair gets really curly when it's, why I don't like it when it's curly. And I'm like, yeah. We're going to the hardware store right now. And it's going to be the best, most fun trip ever. <laughs> it's just weird how it just it, it puts you in a trance. So I was like talking like, talk like that every now and again to say horrible things like in the, one year, or two years, 30 pounds. That's aggressive. <laughs> Here's a little backstory I'm on antidepressants because baby's sad. <laughs> and I was taking Prozac. What are you guys taking? Sam, Sam, what do you want? <laughs> got something. Come on, Sammy. Sammy, don't be scared. <laughs> oh, you guys, no one wants to talk about this, antidepressants? You guys, you're such a happy, friendly town. You guys probably don't even need that, you know? <laughs> you just go to sensual subs, you're like, love and life, love and life, love and life. Who needs Prozac? And it's weird, everyone has a different reaction to antidepressants. Prozac was the first one. I, I, for me, it was like, it didn't help you know, with my depression. The only thing it did is, it's bizarre, but it's true. It helped me overcome my fear of pooping in public restrooms, which is creepy. <laughs> So, and uh, one of the side effects for antidepressants is, is you, sometimes you eat a lot, like it increases your appetite, and that's what happened with me. So I gained 30 pounds. <laughs> and it, it's not something to be proud of, but everyone, we gotta laugh at ourselves, right? That's the important thing these days. Everyone takes themselves too seriously, you know? It's a serious world, let's laugh at ourselves. So I was talking to my nephew, he's like three and a half, I'm like, hey Sutton, look at this, look at that. I got a baby inside. <laughs> There's a baby growing inside me. He goes, that's not a baby. And I said, well, what is it? And he said, lots of treats. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right, actually. Good call. Lots of treats. Lots of vodka sandwiches. 
Rip your floats, rip your floats, you guys. Come on, they're good. <sighs> He's getting older now. He's losing his teeth. What age is that when they lose their teeth? Like 14? What's that? Five or six? Okay. I don't know, I'm a dummy, you guys. I'm a dummy, I don't score well. What are you guys throwing down for the tooth fairy? How much are we throwing down? One dollar? Are you two over here to the right? Did someone say 45 cents? You said 45 cents? Oh, that's your childhood, yeah, right on. Good for you, old school, right on. It should be a quarter, right? Two dollars, come on, right side of the room. You guys, that's, wait, you guys rich over there, huh? You're rich? Two dollars, a quarter. He asked me this question <laughs> when he was losing his teeth. He's like, and this is a great question for a little kid. He's like, Uncle Chell, my tooth is loose. If I'm sleeping and I accidentally swallow it, will the tooth fairy still give me my money? I'm like, wow, that's a great question. It's a perfect time for me to just mess with them. And I said, yes, yes, he will, Sutton. When you're sleeping quietly and gently in the night, <laughs> he's gonna creep into your room. He's gonna slice open your stomach. <laughs> he's gonna reach in there and he's gonna pull out that tooth. He's gonna shove a dirty dollar bill in your lower intestine. And you're gonna poop, you're gonna poop that out, okay? You're gonna poop that dollar bill out. You're gonna poop it out. You're gonna poop it out and you're gonna dig through that poop. You're gonna dig through that poop. And that dollar bill is yours. You know why? Because you've earned it. <laughs> he laughed at that. That's how right. I can't believe like the little kids would laugh at something so twisty. He's like, ha ha. I don't have kids. I had that moment when I realized why you guys do have kids. Uh, Sutton was sick. He's at nursery school and he got sick. He puked. That's all I do really is puke. <laughs> like dogs. Just <laughs> all the t do you remember can you puke? It's, for me, it was a really traumatic experience. You're just sad and you're overwhelmed. It's almost like comparable to being depressed as an adult is when you throw up as a child. Just, it's a parallel, but we'll get into that later. <laughs> just a thought that came to me. Um, so when I was always sad when I threw up and I had to go pick him up because my brother has a job and I usually don't. And so I walk, I go to the nursery school and he's sitting down on the cot and it's just sad. And I go, Sutton, you okay? What happened? And he goes, a hot dog fell out of my mouth. And I got it, I knew it at that point. I'm like, oh, I just want to take care of him. I, I want to live for that guy and just protect that guy, you know? It's horrible, you just feel so bad for them. But then they get older and, oh my gosh, they're hard to deal with when they're older, right? I have a little sister, my dad and my stepmom adopted from Russia, 11 years old, oh my gosh. You guys have to admit that's an annoying age when they're 11 years old. Or do you guys love everything? <laughs> When they're that age, they have an attention-seeking constitution that is relentless, <laughs> relentless. She, she says one of two things. She says, watch me, or look at this. That's all she ever says. <laughs> watch me, look at this. Look at this, watch me, look at this. Look at this, look at this. Watch me, look at this. Look at this, look at this. <laughs> See, it's annoying, right? You guys get it, it's frustrating. And that's not the annoying part. Here's the annoying part. I'm watching her the whole time. That's the frustrating thing. It's like, what are you missing right here? This is windows to the soul right here. The little monkey. Look at this. Watch me. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> what you She's like, what number is that? What number is that? How, it's so frustrating. 
So I'm curious about what you guys' stance is when it comes to, and I'm sincerely curious about when it comes to um, punishing your kids. When it comes to spanking, you guys believe in spanking? Kids, by a round of applause, who believes in spanking? Okay, okay. Boom, you let them have it, it's release, it's necessary. Good for you guys. I get it. Just getting engaged. Now, by a round of applause, who does not believe in spanking kids? It's always that softer pitter patter. <laughs> it's adorable, it's adorable. I'm not even gonna hurt my other hand because I'm so gentle. <sighs> it's very subjective. There's no right or wrong answer to it. But I love to get advice to parents because I don't have kids and they love nothing more than that. <laughs> I can't spank my little sister. That's a weird boundary that I'm not, you know, like, we're not, that's weird. So here's what I. Here's what I do, and this isn't a joke, but hear me out because I don't know how this is gonna, <laughs> you guys are gonna respond to this. Um, when, my <laughs> when my sister is in my face, just not paying attention, I honestly enjoy sneezing in the faces of small children. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I love you guys. Yes, good for you guys. You just hear me out, okay? Over here, you guys hear me out. You sneeze right in their face. Because nothing usurps the attention of a 10 or 11 year old better than a sneeze to the face. They don't know how to take it. They're conf Cause it's never happened. They're like, what is, they're confused. They stop. They're like, what is this? They focus, they're listening. It's like airborne Ritalin. It's, it's effective. <laughs> But you got a small window of opportunity to appear joy and bliss. You can do it like five times. Let's start to catch on after that. <laughs> here's what happened. I knew after the last time, I knew the chick was up. She's like, watch me, look at this, look at that. <laughs> and I felt the sneeze coming on, I'm like, this is perfect. So I sneeze right in her face. And without missing a beat, she stood up, she turned, and she farted on me. <laughs> I'm like, all right, well, I guess the jig is up now, huh? It's weird to be farted on by like a 10 or 11 year old because their farts don't stink. Like they're so pure, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a sassy sunflower coming at you. I got issues, guys. Let's talk about it, all right? Let's, Short and five foot seven, it's very frustrating being a guy, being short. Girls are really condescending to short guys. Girls love to, they like to insult me and make fun of me, like to challenge me on my height, that's a fun game. <laughs> Everyone talks about Napoleon Complex, there's a, there's a, it's almost the opposite. I have people just come up, like, wow. <laughs> Every time I hear that, I'm like, oh no, here, this is not gonna be good. It's like, ah. There's a weird glee, it's like, you're short. <laughs> How tall are you? I'm like, uh, I don't know, 5'7"? No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not, because I'm 5'4 and a half. Look at this, come stand next to me. Stand back to back, look at this. We're right here, I'm like, fine, I'm 2'11". What, what is this argument about? Like, what do you want from me? And that's when I say, okay, um, how much do you weigh? She's like, one time, I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Stand next to me. Stand next to me. <laughs> I weigh 190, weigh at least 220. <laughs> Does that mean? I don't think it does mean. If you keep needling me, I'm gonna strike back like a furious Frodo. Think of it. <laughs> I like girls. You guys, a couple right here? You guys married? Yeah. You're scratching the back of his head before? I love that. I love seeing that. The gal's just scratching his head. It's just like, oh, they love each other? How long have you guys been together for? About 
10 years? Look at you guys. How'd you meet? No kidding, high school sweet. Oh, that's great, you guys, high school sweethearts. <laughs> you guys are so pure here. <laughs> high school sweethearts, 10 years, and you're still doing that. Love that. This is my definition of pure love. A true love is when you don't get sick of that, part, that spouse. I think that's the best way of saying you love them. You don't get sick of them. You guys are sweet. Was there something about her that you enjoyed that you were first attracted to? Like, oh, so long ago now. So long ago, it's a good answer. That's a good answer, you guys. Stop judging him, he's being sweet. But you should scratch your head now, though. You should scratch your head. Put you in the spot, I know. It's like, I find it interesting. Like, feel like her laugh or, or her hair. Here's what I love in a girl. My favorite thing, I think a girl that is independent, I think that's very attractive. Independent girls, holy mackerel. So foxy. I don't like needy girls, because I'm needy myself. <laughs> I'll be honest, yes. And if you've ever seen two needy people together as a couple, it's an awful, awful thing. It's a true story. This is like three or four years ago, I took this, this girl was so needy. Uh, three or four years ago, I took a dame to the cinema. Yeah, dame, that's what I said, dame. And I said cinema, you guys. <laughs> that's how I talk, I'm old fashioned, okay? She wore a lovely blouse. I wore some slacks, some trousers. So I, everything was fine until I took her to the movie picture because she's one of those people. <laughs> she's one of those people that looks to you to laugh. Do you know what I mean when I say that? Someone that looks to you, it's really weird behavior. Every time there's a funny scene, she'd be like, ha ha, ha ha, ha first I'm like, yeah, ha ha, that's funny. Watch the movie, that's what we're here for. <laughs> Two minutes later, ha, 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 ha. I'm like, are you serious right now? This is heck, you can't laugh by yourself. Come on. That's the one thing you should be able to do is have a guffaw by yourself. <laughs> She's that needy, she needs my eye contact to validate her in some weird, desperate way. It was. It was like, here's what it was, it was like a shower curtain in a cheap motel. Clingy. And you can't, you can't escape, you can't get away from that. You guys have showered in a cheap motel, some you guys have here, look at that. Two dollars over here for the tooth fairy, not much over there, huh? So I've showered in a cheap motel all the live long day. And every time the shower curtain wants a piece of me like it's a mating season. I'm just wash myself with that gross piece of soap. Like you're trying to get cleaner, but you're just feeling dirtier. It's just a weird thing. And here comes that curtain to shower. Like a ghost, like a horny ghost. Ah, ah, ah. It keeps coming at you. It's just like, ah. What do you do? Side punch, poof, back off, right? Side punch, poof. Keeps coming, ah. Like, I can't sit here for 90 minutes and have this girl look at me and laugh every two minutes. And how do you end it? I can't look at her case. I can't say, can you stop looking at me? It's just a weird thing, all the way around. So what do you do at that point? It's extreme measures. I'm gonna sneeze in her face. That's why she's a child. I had a girlfriend once, and uh, <laughs> you, ever, you ever love someone? You, you love someone and like, you, you like them so much and you think that something must be wrong? I do, because I'm insecure. And I thought that she was cheating on me, which is a horrible feeling if you think your, your spouse is cheating on you. It's a bad thing. So I went through her phone, which I know you shouldn't do. It's a violation. But at the time I felt comfortable because she was snoring. (laughs) 
and any person that snores should be violated in every way, shape, or form. <laughs> Physically, emotionally, and mentally. Why, why is it that every person that snores falls asleep the moment their head hits a pillow? Can you explain that fun fact to me? Because me, I need like 15 to 20 minutes to relax with my thoughts, because I'm not a dumb animal. Meanwhile, she's over here like <laughs> It's so frustrating. Think I, you think snoring like a cartoon, like it's a shh. There's no shh in a snore. It is an aggressive energy. It's aggressive and it's directed at you. It's always like a, Figure out what a snore is. They're laughing at you for being awake. That's what a snore is. <laughs> I swear I heard her say that. <laughs> it's so frustrating. Because they get away with it. There are no repercussions for people that snore. He's going to get from her. Sorry. Sorry, that's not you apologize. You don't go down on the inflection. He goes, you go, I'm sorry. You go up, like, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> F you, huh? That's what that means. Sorry. So here's what I did. I had a little spray bottle under the bed. A little spritzer. Easy. Relax, you guys. It's cheap. It's like buck, buck 50. And you put vinegar in there. Another buck. That's not a... Relax. Guys, she starts snoring. <laughs> Just grab that bottle. Double spritz right in the mouth. Psh, psh. starts licking her lips. Do you know what you can't do when you're licking her lips? You can't snore. <laughs> so who's the big winner? It's Chelter right here. Chelster. Thanks you guys so much. That's a lot of fun.